Hi, my name is Brian Mullen, and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Influx Data. Thank you so much for joining us. We're really excited to have everyone back for Influx Days this year. And today, we have a packed agenda for you. A lot of new features and capabilities, some you may have already seen, and definitely some you'll hear about for the first time. Even better, we have a highly talented lineup of speakers to tell you about it. These are the utmost experts on all things InfluxDB. But before doing so, I wanted to briefly step back and provide some context for all of the exciting new features and capabilities you'll hear about today. So for the next few minutes, I'll talk more broadly about time series data, the importance of being built for purpose, and how to think about InfluxDB as a platform. Believe it or not, time series data is all around us. In fact, it's the key foundational element of many applications and services. And actually, most data is best understood through the lens of time. We see this among our customers. Let's take Bbox, a residential solar company. Battery sensors in their 85,000 solar panels emit time series data, getting power and status every few minutes across thousands of homes around the world. Or Osgrid, an energy company. Their electrical network traffic is measured in time series data, captured every second and nanosecond across all of Australia. Or Discover, the financial services giant. The back-end infrastructure behind their global credit card services generates massive amounts of time series data, capturing compute, capacity, storage, and traffic patterns. And each of these represents a massive workload of data. And time is the critical deciphering factor in nearly all of it. They measure every hour, every minute, every second, and even every nanosecond. But if you were one of these customers, or really anyone with a time series data workload, it's not about watching your data, it's about acting on your data. And by acting, we don't mean a human being passively watching screens. We mean an application or service that takes action. Let's think about how these two concepts, data and applications, work together. So first, data comes in. It arrives quickly via batch or streaming. And it does so at massive scale. We're talking about billions of data series and millions of data points. And then applications and services take action. They do so in real time, often seconds or even nanoseconds. And it's with context built into the logic of an application or service. So with this kind of speed and scale, we can zero in on what really matters, real-time context at massive scale. In other words, the application you're building has to be smart and at massive scale. This is what matters. Now, it's a known fact that human beings are the most capable animals on the planet. I mean, we all took history and science and have the Discovery Channel, right? But why is this? Why exactly are humans so smart? It comes down to three basic principles. First, humans have the capacity for massive information intake. Things like our vision, depth perception, ability to see color, hearing, smell, ability to move and track others. Second, we have a high-speed analytical capability. Yes, large, powerful processing unit right up here on top. And third, we have hyper-fast transfer into action, instant transfer from brain to muscles, and action-reaction time. Sound familiar? Kind of the same attributes you want in an application, right? Well, most developers do want their applications to be pretty smart too. Like humans, but better. InfluxDB makes that a reality. It's time to get smart with your data. Today, sources of data are more widespread, more distributed, and far more capable than ever before. Multiply all of that by time intervals in the seconds and nanoseconds, and you have a massive workload of data. Think about what's around you. No matter what you may be building, chances are, Time is a critical attribute. And as a consumer, this is true for most of the products and services you use every day. Your home energy, your climate control, your entertainment, even your food delivery. 
And this is true for builders of those products and services too. If you're a builder, your network is about time. Your containers and your cloud infrastructure, also about time. Your digital factory, your wind turbine, your smart agriculture deployment are about time. Even your connected car is about time. And guess what? Most software tools and databases simply cannot handle it because they weren't built for it. InfluxDB was built to solve this very problem. So we've talked about the importance and ubiquity of time series data. It is indeed all around us. And later in this week's agenda, we'll dive deep into the new and existing capabilities of the product. We'll demonstrate real life examples in code. And of course, we'll share our most common use cases and relevant customer stories. But before doing so, we'd like to help everyone first understand the platform and specifically how we think about building our platform. We can think about InfluxDB using a simple framework. And so for the next few minutes, we'll explain the approach that we take to building and distributing the very platform that millions of developers use every day. We call it the smart data platform. It's where developers build, integrate, and run time series applications. InfluxDB is comprised of six individual components, each addressing a particular function, but combining together to form a powerful, cohesive, and still evolving platform that is purpose-built to handle time series data. Those components are data collectors, scripting languages, the API, the time series engine, storage, and the developer console. To begin, we must first collect data. So what exactly does this mean? Well, before processing, acting, or storing any time series data, we must first move data from its source into InfluxDB. And Influx meets developers where they are, offering several methods for data collection and ingestion. It begins with our widely adopted open source collection agent, Telegraph. It continues with our client libraries, scrapers, and our ecosystem of partner and third-party tools. And it expands with new types of collection supported natively by the platform. Next, in building or integrating applications, we have to query and work with the data. Over time, our mission has been to improve and expand on the tool set that's available to developers, namely by adding new languages to enable more building in more languages that developers already know and love, while still pushing forward our innovation with built-for-purpose time series tools. It begins with our powerful Flux language and InfluxQL, both built specifically for handling time series data. And it now expands with SQL, which we now bring for the first time into InfluxDB. And you'll hear about that more later today. Next, we have the API. This is where much of the development and integration takes place on InfluxDB. Our SaaS customers use the API not just to access data, but to accomplish tasks like creating accounts and buckets. It is one platform, one RESTful API, enabling developers to work across clouds, environments, and even versions. Next, we have the time series engine. This underlying but essential component is what makes InfluxDB really perform and scale. This represents our deep roots as a time series platform and showcases the time series bona fides of InfluxDB. Simply put, a few things matter most when it comes to time series performance. Throughput, speed, scale. How many points per second? How many time series? It's also about querying averages, minimums and maximums on that time series data. How quick is ingest? How fast is a query? And how much workload can be handled and where? Alongside the time series engine is storage. And any time series product should have a dynamic storage engine. Specifically with time series, we are often talking about two worlds at once. High fidelity, which is what's happening now in the exact moment or very recently and low fidelity, which is more long-term, what happened last week, last month, or last year. Being able to handle both simultaneously is a minimum requirement of any time series platform. But going beyond this is even more interesting. Eventually, developers care not just about data in general, but about hot and cold data, or warm data, or data that is in different cloud regions, or data in different products or environments. 
All of this happens in the storage layer, and it's getting better and more dynamic with every sprint. Last but not least, we have the developer console. And we like to think of this as the cockpit or command center for InfluxDB. It serves as an admin console, a place to set user permissions, manage security, include or exclude access. It also serves as a builder's console, a place to build, test, and enable your application. Many of the admin, security, and management features for developers land here. And increasingly, we here at Influx are thinking of ways to deliver more tools, more context, and ultimately more flexibility that all lands here in the console. So we know that time series data is all around us. And we know that InfluxDB is purpose built to handle it. But where exactly can it do so? And by where, we mean where are you running InfluxDB? Or where are you running your application? Or where do your data sources reside? There are many environments where InfluxDB can run. And this could be devices and sensors out in the field or inside the factory. This could be on gateways, nearby in a medium footprint device or a server or a local instance. This could be on-prem, in a private cloud or in a data center with infrastructure managed by the organization or the developers themselves. This could be in the cloud, run as a service on one of the major cloud providers, AWS, Microsoft Azure, or Google Cloud. So regardless of whatever environment we're discussing, they all fall into one of two categories. Either they run in the cloud, or they run on the connected edge. InfluxDB runs optimally, effectively, and at scale in each, or more commonly, in both. Devices and sensors run at the edge, and InfluxDB open source and enterprise can run on these small footprints with compute. Gateways, too, are considered the edge, and InfluxDB open source and enterprise can run here. On-prem data centers and infrastructure is also the edge, and both OSS and enterprise can run here. Meanwhile, the entire smart platform runs as a multi-tenant service in all three major clouds, AWS, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud. And commonly, developers build across both. Consider a deployment of many dozens or hundreds of connected devices, each with compute running InfluxDB open source. And this federates with our cloud backend, our InfluxDB cloud service running in Microsoft Azure, which serves as the hub for this time series based application. Likewise, consider a hybrid environment in which InfluxDB Enterprise runs in a cloud native but private data center environment while federating with InfluxDB Cloud as its backend or hub. And all of these elements are made accessible via a common control plane, which is made possible by the developer console. And how is all of this offered to you, the developer? In a distribution model that is simple and transparent. We eliminate the black box. First, we shift control back to the developer. You control the data ingestion, the query count, and the amount of storage. The costs are clear. And every developer can experience the full product. Both brand new and existing scale customers alike use the same platform. We as a company focus on time to awesome. The sooner we help the developer get underway successfully with InfluxDB, the sooner that same developer can move on to other problems in their own project. And finally, we have an open licensing model. Universal, unfiltered access matters to us. And that's why we have a permissive MIT license for our open source. And we remain committed to keeping this promise. What we'll hear today is a deep dive into each of the aforementioned components of the platform. And in each session, we'll share our approach to building that function of the product, as well as tell you about what's new and what you can, what you can expect in the coming weeks and months. But most importantly, you will hear from the experts. That's right, each session will be hosted by the product managers and engineers who not only work on the platform, but are the subject matter experts on that particular aspect of the product those who are closest to the problems we are trying to solve. Our goal is to provide context so that you will not only understand what's new and coming soon, but also understand how and why we build InfluxDB. And with that, I'm excited to hand it over to our very talented team of product managers and engineers to tell you more about InfluxDB, the smart data platform. Thanks.